I've been joined this morning by Kamal Dean Abdullahi, his a Deputy National Communications Director of the NPP, and also Gabriela Tete, she's a member of the NDC's communication team. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Good morning. Good How are you doing? Morning. This is your first year? Yes. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Come on. It's been a while, Alaji. Johnny <laughs> Hughes. Good morning. Good morning. How's the Wednesday Gabriela. going? Is it Gabriela? Gabriela. 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 Oh, okay. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Come on. Um, how's the Wednesday going? Well, started well. We thank Almighty Allah for yet another beautiful day. Um, we're glad to be alive mm. and be well and kicking. I pray and hope that um, as citizens of this country, we will continue to be citizens and not spectators. Okay. And we will also work hard to ensure that what we need to talk about when it's good, we have to. And what indeed we need to talk about when it's bad, we have to. <coughs> so that together we shall build a healthy nation. Without a doubt, the President of the Republic of Ghana um, is doing a good job with his team. Mm. We have taken this economy from an angle to where we are today. Mm. Nose dived economy. Today, we are told the latest ratings from the IMF just yesterday has to say that we have our 7.5 growth mm. because of the dip in nature of our crude production, mm. as it were. It means that indeed we have a resilient and strong economy. We are also told that students are, of course, who have completed GHS mm. have the opportunity okay. to be educated irrespective of the status quo of your parents in mm. terms of cash. Mm. You would have to go to school. This is the good governance that we're talking about. Okay. And we are com comfortable and okay. happy that it's been ruled out. 7.5 growth uh, is, is good on paper. Is, is the economy pocket It's friendly? not just good on paper. That is, that, is, that is the outlook given by the IMF and that is what the economy is. These are facts and these are not just propaganda. No, nobody doubts the facts. Yes. I'm asking, is it pocket friendly? Um, I when you say pocket friendly, I don't know what you are insinuating and what actually is the motive. Pocket friendly as in what? So, as in have so, they put money in your pockets? Yes. Oh, I, I'm not sure. The last time I checked, even the John Draman in Mahama when he was interviewed prior to the 2016 election, he says no government will put money in your pocket. Government would have to rule up policies. Mm. Government would have to ensure that, of course, programs and projects are put in place for you mm. to buy in, for you to incur, of course, come into it, try to have your quota contribution to the, country, um, to the economy and do something for you to be able to get something back as it were. So the point is creation of jobs. The point is, is the economy resilient? Are we able to be solvent as a nation? Mm. That is what I'm talking about. Okay. And I'm saying that the economy is on a sound footing. Mm. It is better than where we took it from as mm. it were. Okay, clearly Camilla. better. Says uh, they've done better, and uh, the, better the, the president is doing well. You, you should yeah. be giving praise and not criticism. Course, yeah. No, that I is, didn't just say this, so. That is I said when it's bad, let's when talk is, about it. When, when it's is good, good, let's talk about it. So, so I am this a is nationalistic good. figure. So this and is what good. is good, I will talk about. Okay. It. So we'll discuss both. Yo, what, okay. So let's let's hear your thoughts, Gabriela. Well, good morning to your viewers. Um, this is my first time on TV three. So, mm. good morning, everyone. And this month is a uh, um, breast cancer awareness month. Right. So I have my pink. On okay, address absolutely. In solidarity <laughs> of breast cancer. For all those who are spearheading research in breast cancer, mm. well done. To those who have issues in breast cancer, we should speed the recovery. And we know that as science advances, we'll definitely find a cure and a solution to breast cancer. I share cancer. the sentiment as well. Right. I think over the weekend or so last weekend, they were in Cape Coast mm. to mm -hmm. launch the campaign against breast cancer. I think that's actually here. Have you been doing the test at home? Uh, of course, I, 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 I am a routine, you know, okay. or a regular um, so client you, you, of so the you, hospital so to you ensure that I'm home. okay. You help at home. I, I, of course, I try my best to do what I can do. I mean, I try to, I try to sensitize her to do what is right ah, so that she will find you herself in trouble. Okay, I don't right. know what I'm going to do to help. Maybe you teach me afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Okay, Gabriela. so now on the issue of the economy. Absolutely. Um, you know, Seven point five growth. Uh, Yes, obviously, we're, we've taken a positive trajectory. All our indicators are looking up. Mm. Um, almost all our indicators are looking up, except for our currency, our forex exchange, mm. which still fluctuates a bit mm. because we're still largely an import dependent mm -hmm. economy. Mm. And there's a lot of pressures on foreign currency. Our government also borrow excessively mm. in foreign denominated currencies, which also puts pressure on the foreign currency. Mm. Now, you know, in the late, um, in the past administration, the past administration did 
come under a lot of pressure mm -hmm. on the economic front. <laughs> We're facing very strong headwinds. That's the reason why I went for the IMF program. IMF, okay. And these gentlemen here don't like to give us credit for the IMF program. Okay. Always being condemned for the, for the yeah. IMF program. Mm -hmm. But the yeah. IMF program was actually the standing block to build the current resilient economy that we have. The investment we put in the oil sector is the same investment that is driving the growth in the oil sector. So sometimes, although they would like to condemn us for everything that is wrong, mm -hmm. they also have to appreciate that we did do something, something for that. Now, is the growth pocket friendly? Mm -hmm. That has always been the challenge with economic management. Mm -hmm. Because at the top level, you are very much focused on the macro indicators and everything. So on paper, it looks very polished. Then you come down to the household level. And then that's where the issues really are. Cost of living is up. We have high unemployment still an issue. This government, since it came into power, has already sent home about 26,000 people. The job creation opportunities is not <laughs> opening as fast as mm -hmm. would expect. Mm -hmm. Because granted that this economy is like an informal economy. Right. So the prospect of job creation is slow okay. within the formal sector. Are they doing enough? Not really. Because from where I stand there, negatives are much more stronger than the positives. Positive. Cost of living, utilities are up. We have been inundated with taxes. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we're talking about the CST, CST in addition to all right. the other things we'll be discussing. Utilities went up, I think, last month. And then just this month, it's also gone up again for yeah. the third quarter. Mm -hmm. Incomes haven't gone up. So people's disposable incomes have actually deple uh, depleted or depreciated mm -hmm. in value. But you're, so, you're getting an increase, a raise in salary by January 2020. That's, that's for the public sector workers. We right. don't know about the private sector workers. And we also don't know how many firms are under pressure from the uh, cost in production at the moment. Mm -hmm. And what is how it's affecting their, competitive, their competitiveness as firms. You have to forgive me, I sometimes mm -hmm. talk very it's okay. fast. <laughs> <laughs> so how it affects their competitiveness as firms. Mm -hmm. You know, so all that data will come out when the Central Service releases data for the last quarter. Mm -hmm. But as I said, it's this way, that way. Okay. You know, it's 50-50. And that's my citizen opinion. Citizen's opinion. Okay. <laughs> come, come on. The, the conversation then will, will dovetail into, um, she spoke about imports. And your government reduced the benchmark values for, for imports, 50 and 30%. But some business people who are spoken to us say, look, we want to import. We are happy that the government has reduced the benchmark value. But our monies are stuck in the bank because the banks were consolidated. If I have, say, 100K, I'm just being given 10K for now, and which is becoming a problem for my business because I need my capital to import, and my money is in the bank. Government says I have saved the money, but I can't have access to my money. How do I import? Oh, well, very interesting. Um, I'm happy you start on a note where you say that, look, let's give government credit. Mm -hmm that at least government has taken into consideration the fact that we have businessmen who, of course, import or maybe export as it were. I mean, the port activities mm -hmm. is being looked at. Yeah. That's essentially what you're mm -hmm. talking about. And having looked at it, positive trends. Has government been sensitive to the plight of the importer? Has government been sensitive to the plight of the businessman? Yes, you rightly said that benchmark values has been looked at and mm -hmm. other, you know, if you like, um, uh, taxes or mm -hmm. if you like um, levies that are supposed to be paid have been looked at by government. Mm -hmm. Now you go further to say or try to draw in the physical sector, okay. the financial sector, mm -hmm. um, the cleanup. And basically that's what you were trying to see. Mm -hmm. That look, if an importer says that look, I have the intent to import. Mm -hmm. My money is sitting there in the bank. This bank has actually been affected mm -hmm. as a result of the financial cleanup that we do right. have or the right. financial sector cleanup that we do have. Again, we ask ourselves a question. If you are put in a position of trust mm -hmm. and you are told to look into the economy, ensure that it's become resilient, mm -hmm. ensure that no one is shortchanged, ensure that at least regulations are, of course, adhered to, mm -hmm. then you sit there, a woof, and of course say, oh, I don't care, I don't mind, let us run. Anybody can go and pick his bag. Then, of course, at the end mm -hmm. of the day, the financial sector, which is supposed to be solid, mm -hmm. goes bonkers, mm -hmm. scrambles then you are supposed to be in position of trust. Are you supposed to be giving credit? No. Then the government of the day said, look, do we have a bad financial sector? Mm -hmm. Do we have to look at it? And of course, I'm yet to see an NDC man coming to tell me that, look, the closure of, say, for example, um, Unibank, 
the closure of say um capital bank, bank and the closure of other banks UT did bank. not have problems or they did not have problems they just got up and closed them no we had problems some are in court today mm. we are told how some 610 million ghana cities has been pushed or was pushed into a particular bank mm. and we're told how it was if you like misappropriated as it were that's why some people are in court mm. of course to answer questions it tells you that that sector was bad if that sector was bad, we need to save that depositor. That mm. importer you are talking about is a depositor. Right. Who, of course, if government has sat down and said, look, I don't care, let us move on, the economy must grow, mm. then of course the bank collapses. Then the depositor who is now today mm. sure of having his money, mm. even though he's not gotten it yet, okay, or she's not gotten it yet, mm. okay, would have been affected adversely in right. terms of losing completely because the bank has been closed and gone. Right. Then government intervenes to say, from these indicators, let us help this economy by cleaning up this financial sector, mm -hmm. by making sure that we streamline things and make sure Bank of Ghana is on its supervision top notch and make sure the finance, uh, finance ministry is on top notch and things work out. Then somebody says to say, the importer wants his money, he has not gotten it. Right. We don't do this. The, the we cannot run the, an economy like these that. Are the recklessly. These are the importers. Like they did. These are the importers who are asking that. Look, we appreciate the fact that you yeah. have saved our monies for us. Mm -hmm. But where is the money? The point is, is it, I just told you that the position of that importer today is that I may need the money today. Okay. However, because of some bureaucratic, if you like, um, you know, uh, presence, mm. he wouldn't be able to get the money today because a receiver has been, um, as it were, appointed for that particular bank that he has. Mm. There's supposed to be some looked into, as it were, some at operations of the bank, mm. where are we? But what is essential and critical is that that importer, with a great of respect, I share in that person's pain mm. that today you may not be able to import uh, because you want it now. However, there has been a problem, okay. which we all acknowledge. Mm. That problem says that, look, we are saving you. Let's okay. see how we can keep your money. Then in future, you'll be able to get your money mm. and continue to do your business well. Mm. I, I'm here to see an importer or hear an importer who say that anyway. Okay. I'm just taking it, I'm taking right. it from the fact mm. that you have said mm. this. Mm. Anyway, but the point is, saving the depositor is very important. Right. We all saw how Cooperative Bank got collapsed under mm. General Rollins when NDC mm. was in power, mm. or it was PNDC then, I don't know. But we saw also HFC Bank and some other banks that collapsed. And we saw how depositors suffered mm. we saw piram and we saw how people died as a result of losing their money mm. we saw dkm under their ineptness mm. in in the bronx afro region and we, we saw how people I'll, suffered I'll, I'll, I'll so I'll, I'll, wait, wait a minute we I'll, saw you, how you dkm mm. under their ineptness mm. we saw how at the end of the day depositors suffered in bronx afro it took this government intervention cleanup to mm. come and pay these people today as we speak mm. dkm customers have been paid and helped by the government of the day so i'm saying that we will not recklessly manage an economy we will make sure the economy is resilient mm. and strong and better for the Ghanaian populace they, to they, the, the benefit. The DKM customers have paid all 100%. We have. Mm. Check Everybody. it. And I, I challenge the media okay. to go and check it. Now, We've paid. We've now, done well. Let, let me put a final question to you. Yes. Um, so the receiver in the matter of the collapsed banks or consolidated banks mm. identified 15 people whom they sued, yeah. including the ICGC Church and that Dr. Mensa Ozo. Yes. Now, in the matter that is before court now, which we won't discuss yeah, right, because it's sharp yeah. 2JK. Yeah. You, your government is putting four people before the court. Mm -hmm. What is different from what the receiver saw and what you saw, which is why you're not taking 15 people to court in the, in the matter, yeah. and you are taking four? What's government's you see, I'm not a lawyer, but you see, with recourse to Article 19 of the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana, which talks about fair trial, mm -hmm. and of course, which says that you have, must prove beyond reasonable doubt that someone indeed is culpable mm. of an offense. Clearly, it's there. It tells you that you need to do a painstaking job as somebody who wants to prosecute or as someone who is alleged okay. that, look, you need to prove beyond reasonable doubt. If okay. these 15 people you talk about, indeed, according to the receiver, have questions to answer, as it were. Mm. No one is saying that they are exonerated okay. just because four people or five people have been taken to court. Okay. No one is saying so. Mm. What we are saying is that evidence gathered by the Attorney General's Department investigation that has been conducted mm. and the law again has to do with evidence mm. you don't go to just court you go to court with your brief and your brief must be solid okay. and must be in conformity with the law mm. and i'm saying that the attorney general says that we are convinced that these four people indeed their actions or inactions constituted to as it were collapse of the bank but the receiver, we are the, them receiver the, bank. the receiver was working for government the receiver has done his work the attorney general is finished. You see, in the it, eyes, it, it in is based on. Come I'm on, saying, come mm -hmm, on, mm -hmm. it's based on the receiver's recommendations yeah. 
which is why the banks were collapsed. It's not just based on the receiver's uh, recommendation alone. Of course, they have... I mean, there are more feasance uh -huh. and all of these. That has but, been there. But, but, but it took the receiver mm -hmm. to go in there to identify and say, this had gone wrong, that had gone I wrong, know, know, that had gone know, wrong. And so based on that, let's put them together yeah. and send some people away and, and, and save depositors. The receiver well. has done purely an administrative and financial job. Okay. Okay. The Attorney General's Department has done an investigation whether or not the laws of this country were actually reneged upon. Okay. And whether or not they, people who, of course, are charged mm. today, okay, are supposed to be in court. Okay. That is the Attorney General's conviction. Now, the conviction of the Attorney General says that, look, eight YZ are supposed to go to court based on these charges, mm. 26 charges professed against them. Okay. That is the investigation they have conducted. Okay. So I'm saying that we shouldn't jump the gun by saying that even those people who have not been yet, mm. okay, that mm. ends it. Because I am aware that investigation is still ongoing, mm. but if they are satisfied at a point in time that maybe Kamal Dean or maybe Mr. Mohammed mm. or so mm. is the, supposed to answer questions, that person goes to court. Okay. And then we'll see how it okay. goes. Gabriela, yeah. let's, let's take a bite so on, it's not on, 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 this, on this particular one, uh, the, the matter of the importers uh, talking about their, the acknowledging the fact that their monies have been saved, but they do not have access to that money because the, the rule now is that if you have more than 10,000 cities in there, you can't get all at this time. You can only get 10,000 and anything below 10,000. And they say, even though the benchmark uh, values have been reduced at the ports to allow for more imports, and you stated that we're a large land import country, they cannot go and import because Sikanu Wayne. That's the question they're asking. <laughs> and even beyond Sikanu Wayne, Sikanu is saying, because, you know, 10,000 last week mm. is not the same as 10,000 today. Right. Whether you're going to equate it to the pound, the euro, the dollar, safer whatever currency you're going to use because mm. our currency has depreciated against other currencies so as an importer what would ten thousand last year mm. acquire me and what would ten thousand this year acquire me if i require more funds mm -hmm. and i'm unable to access those funds because of limitations that you yourself have placed have placed on my funds right what are i doing? So i can play my business but government saved your money you want to give government credit for saving you your money. You could have lost it all. You pay social security, mm. right? So that when you go on retirement, there's something to take care of you. Okay. If prior to 60 years old, you decide to opt out at least say 45, when mm. you reach your mandatory minimum deposits, mm. and social security tells you that at the moment we cannot give it to you because we think that you should wait till you are 60. Okay. Does that make sense to you? What does the law say? Mm. So if I have saved up my money as my capital for my business and I require it to run my business, to import, whatever, whatever restriction you place on that money, that does not give me access to the amount of money I need to adequately run that business. Mm. For me, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's neither here nor there. <laughs> you've, you've, already, you've, 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 already, you've already crippled me. Oh, no. So it's not a question of uh, you've saved my money. I need that money. That's in normal work. situations. That's what? That's in normal situations. And we're talking about reality. We're not talking about <laughs> political <laughs> absurdities. We're mm. talking about the, the things that affect the everyday man. Mm. If I can't import, then what, what's the point? The, how then do you say you're supporting businesses and you're growing businesses? Kamal says you don't have the moral right to be talking about uh, people mm. whose funds are locked up. You are DKM, you had. All of yeah, those ones course. and under your watch, and in fact, even the, the issue of the banks, you sat and watched while it happened. You uh, see, what do you say? Th there's something that we have to bear in mind the central bank is an independent, autonomous body. Mm -hmm. As political leadership, who's responsible for economic management, this, that, that, that. Mm -hmm. You can recommend the central bank. The central bank has its own institutionalized regime mm -hmm. for uh, procedures, for monitoring, for whatever action that they choose to take. Mm -hmm. It's their choice. You can only propose to them. Now, if the central bank, during the, um, the time of the NDC, mm -hmm. with issues of DKM, when issues of DKM came up, granted that the central bank probably was not um, more pushy Mm -hmm. in the area of monetary, the microfinance sector. Mm -hmm. So that whole sector itself mm -hmm. was a very muddy terrain mm -hmm. 
for want of a better expression. And who's doing what? That's the job of the central bank. And but the, the central bank, but the central bank act okay. had not mandated it to have supervisory <laughs> role over that sector at okay. the time. Okay. Eventually, they worked at those regulations to mm. be able to get into the microfinance sector mm. and clean out things like DKM. When we're leaving office, mm. DKM's assets were being liquidated together with the, the Registrar General's mm. Department it was working with the Bank of Ghana okay. to liquidate the assets of DKM to, uh, to pay off depositors. Mm. So you don't say that we sat and we did nothing. We were doing something. But how, so how did 77 of them get in in the first place? That's, mm -hmm. that's a question. And, and even under the NPP as well, it's 349 or so. We we told that some of them are actually not not properly set up. Exactly. You know, that, and that's a national problem that we must look at. That's a national problem. That, and that also means that we have to ensure that the central bank is adequately, um, has enough uh, human resource capacity, mm. the, for, uh, has the actual capacity mm. to be able to monitor the financial sector going forward. Okay. Whether it's the universal banking system, the savings and loans, the microfinance sector, the entire financial system, mm. we have to ensure that the central bank is up and doing moving forward. Okay. Banking supervision. Mm. Is the department adequate enough mm. to monitor over 600 financial institutions? Mm. Mm. That, that's the question. <laughs> you see? Okay, capacity. Come uh, on, come on. I, I, I can appreciate the struggle of my sister. Come on, come yes. on. What's the struggle uh, here? Yeah, so yeah, I, see, I thought I had. She a makes concessions, and of course, they are very good concessions. And you see, that's why when I, I my, the preamble of our my my, my submission today mm. had to do with we viewing things nationalistic. Mm. I mean, with a nationalistic eye. I mean, that's the point she's making. She made concessions that look. We had a sector, the microfinance sector. You asked the question, mm. which indeed was muddied mm. by what? And it's just under their watching. By regulation. Absolutely. The point is that the regulations were not up, I mean, top notch. The point is that supervision wasn't top notch. Mm -hmm. But we had all these financial sectors, whether or not they were well regulated or they were streamlined, it is another matter. Yes, I agree with her when she talks about the autonomy of the Bank of Ghana. However, it is not just excellent. I mean, it's, 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 it's not as explicit as she sees it. Mm -hmm. Of course, at the end of the day, implicitly, government of the day is supposed to be at least a watchdog, as it were, on the central are you, bank. Are you suggesting that my point it was the government she makes that, admission. That, that pushed the central bank to collapse the seven banks? Oh, no, no. You see, central bank have done their work. Of course, the finance minister, of course, at the end of the day, whether you like it or not, has some kind of over, uh, supervision over. I mean, not directly per se, right. but they deal hand in hand so or work in hand in hand with the bank. Of bank, bank so I'm saying, in the matter of the collapse bank, my system makes concession here clear. Did the that government we, have, we have a sector it? which was bad, no, I want which you to, needed I want, to look I want, into, I want you to and we have question. looked into and we've solved my, it. That's, my brother, that's good. I, I want you to answer mm -hmm. my question. Yes. In the matter of the collapse bank, did the government have a hand in it? Collapse bank, as in what? The seven banks that. Obviously, if you entrust, I made this point earlier on, if you entrust the position of management, to a particular person by voting for that particular political mm. party and a group of people to manage the affairs of this country. Mm. The finance ministry is supposed to be part of, part of the executive. Okay. And the finance ministry oversees what the Bank of Ghana does as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that even when you look at the board of the composition of the board of Bank of Ghana, clearly mm -hmm. you wouldn't say that government doesn't have a representation. Government does have a representation there. Okay. And if they see something wrong, mm -hmm. they need to ensure that it is cleansed, it is washed, okay. so that Ghana will not mm -hmm. be shortchanged, so that depositor will not be shortchanged. Okay. She agrees that when you take the financial sector that microfinance sector was bogus a lot of it so it means that it's justifiable okay. that government at the end of the day had to do this, some of this work and cleanse the sector very okay. well yes the financial the, the microfinance sector was no bogus hmm. the was. purpose of it the microfinance sector was to drive financial inclusion right. at the micro level right. those petty traders who cannot afford um, and the mad you spoke about allah allah okay. allah please that's, that's allah that's fine. Fine. is an expression it's all right that's fine <laughs> allah yes you were saying so it was supposed to drive financial inclusion those petty traders who cannot access funds from the universal banks, when they go to a microfinance, because they don't have the documents, mm. this is documents to access right. it. You go to a microfinance, you need a national ID and okay. a guarantor, right. and you have your money to help you trade. Right. Universal banks were not doing that. So it was to serve a purpose. Okay. Mm. Looking at the number of people, the population in that sector, obviously there's going to be a lot of demand. <laughs> as, uh, some private entrepreneurs are going to see it as a 
good opportunity mm. to set up financial services to cater for that market. Okay. And that was what happened. Regulation lagged behind. Okay. This is not the first time we're having a situation where regulation has lagged behind innovation. Mm. You have a case in Fuebi Men's Gold. Right. Where even they're in court still trying to figure out what happened mm. and where to go next. They are asking government to help them retrieve their money. I don't know what's become of that. Come on. Do, do we know? Well, I, I, I'm aware that government has pumped in some money to ensure the, stand, the, 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 those, the, the sector is solvent. And but I thought, I thought enough, that the and Minister of for Finances were not going to pay any money. Oh, which of the, the In the matter of men's gold. Oh, yeah. Of, of course, that's a different matter. Of course, we all saw but how... That's, that's what she's talking about. I mean, yes, that's what she's talking about. And I'm saying that I'm aware that when it comes to financial sectors, government pumping some money. On the men's gold matter, of course, which is a matter which is yet to be looked at. Um, of course, we all know how it happened. We don't want to recount all these things again. But government, at the end of the day, asks, or let's ask the question, does government have, as it were, um, the responsibility, mm -hmm. okay, of paying for someone's, if you like, quote unquote, deliberate actions that, of course, see to appears to be like short changing a particular matter, uh, person, mm -hmm. or if there is, even though it's yet the matter is mm -hmm. before the police, and I don't know that it's going to the court yet, uh, mm -hmm. if there is a claim mm -hmm. that I have been fraudulently, mm -hmm. as it were, short change. Okay, mm. so government come to say that look, because you have been fraudulently shortchanged, I am going to pay for it. No, these are questions. But we that's what Gabriela is saying. We, that we, men's gold there matter, was also an issue we, we, of, we, of legislation we have, we lacking have behind. We have this men's gold matter, and we've made the entire country mm. to know that indeed the actions and inactions of men's gold was improper. Okay. And that is why some people also thought that, look, we are going to invest in a purely business, whatever, ar 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 arrangement with them. If it appears to be fraudulent, that is for them to handle. And, and, and Ben's Gold is asking but that Men's you, you should help them to retrieve the $39 million that they have in stuck in Dubai somewhere. Mm. Uh, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure when Men's Gold was going to be Dubai to sell the gold. He told government to help them. <laughs> help me sell the gold. I'm not sure the, the Men's Gold did that. No. Is that, is that right? So fine. Miss men go went to sell their gold in Dubai, which is allowed. Maybe sometime they have the license to do that. Then you sell your and maybe for some reason you have not gotten your money back. You say, government, go and take my money for me. You see, we cannot always do this to ourselves. That's because people are on we the streets <laughs> threatening your so, government so, so, to so, say, so, so, if, you, if we don't pay their money... So I have gone to borrow money from Hughes. Okay. Hughes is on the street making noise. Kamala has borrowed my money. Government say, oh, because Hughes is on the street making noise, let me come and take your money. Government does that for the Christmas? Okay. Is that what they do? Actually, the point we're making was about <laughs> regulation no, no. lagging so, behind so, innovation. So he, uh, and, and the reason why we end up yeah. with some of the situations with mm. the, the microfinance mm. sector, the men's gold issue, is because we are not projecting far ahead enough mm. to also think faster alongside innovation no, in the private, the private space. You see, that, don't, that, the that, men's gold matter... matter the, Gabriela, don't even bring but, but it up. But there was no law. If you there follow no it, law. because we are doing, I said we don't want to we're, recount. We're, we're there was no law. Okay. You are the, let's, 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 let's switch anyway, the topic yes, now at this point. <laughs> and yesterday, the customers <laughs> of the GN Bank were on the streets. They were asking government one more time to, to pay their money, so to get uh, Dr. Papakwesindum to give them their money. Let's take a look at them. When we return, I'm sure we can delve deeper into, into that particular one. And you can always join us on WhatsApp 020-216-6633. Take a look at it now. This is one of the many protests that has hit the company in recent times. Gold Coast Fund Management, a subsidiary of Group Indum, has struggled just like defunct GM Bank, which was downgraded to a savings and loans before its license was finally withdrawn. The protest started from Obra Circle towards TUC and the High Street, Ministries and finally at the Jubilee House. Leadership presented a petition to the Finance Ministry over grievances they demanded urgent response. Police visibility was high, which ensured a peaceful exercise. Inscriptions on placards clearly revealed how frustrated these customers were. Demonstrations are mostly characterized by breathtaking moments and this is no exception. And for people to go this extra, it only tells you how frustrated they are and how far they can go to press home their demands. And there's one thing running through their lips, they want their lockup funds pay them. According to leadership, about 500 of their members, mostly pensioners, have died. And these are persons who've invested with their pension funds. Per the demands of customers, they want President Tegufu Ado to prosecute Dr. Papakwesi Indum together with the entire management of Gold Coast Fund. But by this time, I should be rolling my trolley with every British 
British breakfast and enjoy my life before I die. But Kosindum said, you are a fool to invest your money here. I applied for my school fees and my rents. They didn't pay for the rents. They didn't pay for the school fees. Because of that, I, I, I've had to defend my course. Wow. Yes, for a whole one year. Now, if they don't pay me the money, it means that maybe I have to forget about the school. Is it fair? They also won the accounts of 2016 presidential candidate of the PPP, Dr. Papakosi Indum, frozen. Members also won the Director General of the Securities and Asian Commission, Daniel Ogbame Tete, sacked. When customers reached their final destination, which was the Jubilee House, leadership refused to present the petition to the representative until the president, vice or chief of staff, showed up. The alleged numerous petitions to the presidency have fallen on deaf ears. They finally presented the petition after Minister of State in charge of state interest and governor's authority, Dr. Kwekwe Fie, assured them of relaying their grievances directly to the president. This is about fee time because whenever we organize demonstration in our various regions, we send delegation to come and present petition to His Excellency. But it will interest you to know that little has been said on all those petitions that we submitted. So we believe that maybe the president wasn't privy to these petitions that we submitted. On those grounds, or on these grounds, we demanded for the presence of the president or the vice president or the chief of staff to come and receive. Deputy PRO of the Accra Regional Police Command, Inspector Brad Kobina Danso, entreated prospective demonstrators to take a cue from this peaceful demonstration. Welcome back and thank you very much for your time. We're looking forward to your messages as we see them coming in thick and fast. Come on. Yeah. For the fifth time running, the people are crying on to you to do something. And one of the demonstrators in there, we didn't get to that part, they're saying that, look, Dr. Hindu must consistently insist that you need to pay the contractors who borrowed money from him so that they, he's also able to give the money up. Because now you have tied his hands, he can't get it. What, what's happening? The, the narrative doesn't end there. The question is, if GN Bank, which later was brought to GM Savings and Loans, mm. and today I'm told that they are not even supposed to be, I'm not too sure, with in existence, mm. existence, as it were, or their license has been taken back, mm. as it were. Once again, it takes us back to the earlier submission when we spoke about the receiver being appointed, mm. when we spoke about the books being looked into, and of course, to where we are, and then maybe whoever is supposed to be safe. Here, the deposit we're talking about, they are saved and their money is given. However, due process must be followed, as it were. Point is... It's been over a year. You see, yes, of course. Like I said, you see, I keep on using the word reckless. Government shouldn't be that reckless. What brought us to where we are today? It was because of this recklessness. If you are talking about pay contractors, yes, we saw a list published by Dr. Indu. Was it true? All those, we saw, uh, the receiver will have to answer these questions. We saw a list published by him and people who owe him. Make a tally of all that. Mm. It's not even sufficient to pay the entire debt of GN Bank. That's a fact. Mm. Tally of all the money that they even owe, mm. assuming that government hasn't even paid the contractors, without admitting though, that we have not been able to pay the contractors, the money even alleged to be owed by contractors to GN Bank. It's not even enough to take off, to defray the cost of G GN Bank. What can, so my what, point what can the people on the street hope for? The point is that government has already taken a step to ensure that the cleanup is done. Mm -hmm. Government has assured every single depositor in this country mm -hmm. that no one will be left without his or her money given to. DKM, it happened under their watch. We came, it took some time. We have been able to pay them. I know very well that the finance minister is on top of this matter. The Bank of Ghana is on top of this matter. So far, we should give credit to government mm -hmm. for at least pumping close to 11 billion Ghana cities to ensure that the citizens of this country are saved. Mm -hmm. That's the point we're making, and these are critical points. These, 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 these GN bankers yes. have been on the streets for five times. This is the fifth time. Uh, and they haven't mm -hmm. gotten a response from government yet. The right, the right to demonstrate. And, and they say, and they say, look, you had one of the women that I should be I know, pushing I know. my trolley oh, and yeah. enjoying my English breakfast because that I've worked for it you and see, I'm on retirement. You see, you see, you see. What is government saying to them? I am saying that what government say we share in their sentiment. 
by what I'm saying that I'm, that's, there's an assurance out there that so long as government has committed itself to ensuring that the right thing is done okay. and even has gone further to pump in some money to make sure that we save some of these situations, mm -hmm. they should just go out there and know very well that indeed, irrespective of the fact that you go on the street to demonstrate, okay. but you still you are still considered as a customer of the bank that you belong to, mm -hmm. which bank has actually been um, insolvent, mm -hmm. and because of its insolvency, it's now today going to be looked at by government and your money will be given to you. That's the assurance I will give them. However, mm -hmm. due process must be followed. Okay, you see. Cabrilla, five times they've been on the streets to say where, yes, where is you. our money? We want to, we want it now, government stepping for us. Yes, and for five times, government is not listening. <laughs> Because if they are going to listen, they would have listened long ago. Mm. So I think that they should just pursue legal mm -hmm. action. Yeah, I think really. the Gold Coast Fund mm. may did mention that they legal started action against the government. Allah, allow her, please. Allow her to. Okay, allow her to. No, I'm fine. I'm just to ventilate her points. I'm not. I'm not a legal <laughs> advisor to anybody. Allow, allow her to ventilate her points. The Gold Coast um, mm. management right. did mention that they've started making some payments for those whose deposits were below two thousand. Right. But there are still those who have substantial amounts still locked in there. That's mm. <coughs> excuse me. They still have to settle. But this whole financial cleanup. I mean, our, our, our position is that we could have done it in a much more safer way. Okay. Securing depositors' funds and still protecting jobs. Because our issue right now at the moment is that we've allowed too many people out on the street without even several pa pa uh, packages. Mm -hmm. Some of the workers from Capital Bank and the rest who, owed, who took facilities from the banks, right. whatever severance they are going to get has been equated to their loans. And they went with nothing. They get to nothing. There was a, I don't know whether I was watching TV3 or another channel. There was a lady who was saying that she came from Obuasi mm -hmm. and her husband had lost their job. And she had brought her money into this fund. And I asked there. So imagine what they are going through. So I think that, I mean, it speaks clearly to the insensitivity of this government at a time <laughs> when things are tough for the ordinary <laughs> Ghanaians. <laughs> really, people should be out and doing because, oh, wow. Charlie. <laughs> so, so, so Kamal says we should follow due process. I agree. And um, we cannot be reckless in, in giving off money just because people are crying for it. What would well, have, what would have should, NDC government should, done? First of all, this institution has a list of their depositors, first of all. If, secondly, these institutions have these funds locked up into some investments of some sort, that takes time to liquidate. Right. We would ensure that those assets are liquidated so that you can pay them off within a specified period of time. Okay. Right now, they're giving assurances that some of them is going to take three years. Mm. Can they survive three years under mm. such conditions? Hmm. I doubt. <sighs> What Kamal, else could we have done? Come on. Yeah. To choose an they, exchange commission. Mm -hmm. they, and they, and they, well, they, they have been so quiet in this whole, in this whole in drama. Fact, they're so, asking for the head of uh, Reverend Babi Tete of the Security and Exchange Commission. That's an opinion. I mean, the whole with. thing boils down to regulations and whether or not regulations were enforced. I mean, that's what we look at. They're asking and of course, for his head. I'm saying that the whole thing boils down to regulations, whether or not regulations were enforced. And then we ask ourselves a question Does this matter has a history? It does. Which history is that? Hitherto, we didn't have the regulation being enforced. Today, okay. if you are asking for the head of Reverend Obama, I'm surprised because the point is that she, he is now the one who has who is ensuring that the regulations mm -hmm. must be enforced. That and at the men's goal matter. That and at goal coast and securities matter. These things because we are now on top of our job. We are not sleeping on the job like the way NDC was doing today. That is why today regulations have been seen not, of course, earlier on to have been what followed and today the regulations are supposed to be followed so reverend obama i'm surprised they are even asking for his head the point is he's the man who has come to rather do a good job mm -hmm. a man who has come to ensure the law if we have carved this laws for ourselves let the laws work and let us move on so why call for his head the, the, when they were sitting down so and know very well that these people are going to plunge us into problems mm -hmm. uh, look they could have collapsed and they go away and we don't even get the, it this, the government this has due, intervened this due process when is it ending and when are the people well you've asked a good question but i'm saying that let's just speed up the work we have done the work we've seen it and it's a problem let us try at the end uh, um, as, as much as possible as a government to do what is the right and do the needful by ensuring that at least everything is sanitized then those people who are supposed to be paid legitimately are paid are you not worried that the people out there each time they go on the streets they are threatening you uh, that they will they will take a pound of their flesh at the elections i recall i recall, Mezgold, I recall. Mezgold, uh, customers have said the gn bank 
even some of the workers from the collapsed banks. It takes me back to, to before, prior to 2006, 2016 election, when in Botswana, the then president of the Republic of Ghana, John Dramani Mahama, made a comment of a joint funu. You remember that? Yes, yes. Uh, dead dead good syndrome. That look, when election is getting closer, people, all manner of demonstration, all manner of force comes and all that. But he has at least uh, assumed the posture of uh, uh, the, the dead good mm -hmm. syndrome. We are not going to assume that posture. We are going to be a listening government. The uh, uh, demonstrations are embedded in the constitution of the Republic of Ghana. Take Article 21D and look at it. It is their right to demonstrate. It is their right to give a petition. The government of the day has shown commitment. We will listen to the citizens and make sure we go on. They can continue the demonstration all right because it is the law. They, that they are demonstrating however, for, for a purpose. However, I am and saying that purpose is not being achieved. That, that purpose is what I told you that is being worked on. And I know that the fact that we have been able to even see the problem mm -hmm. and solve it, we are in the course of doing it. You don't just expect government to get a how, money. How long do they have now. to wait? We need to know the right. I know they are working on it. How long know do they will. have to wait? I know government is working on it solidly, and I know it will be sorted. Okay, Gabriela, you have something to say, unless uh, if not, then we'll go for messages quickly. Well, I mean, it's obvious <laughs> that um, even trying to justify is difficult for him. Um, <laughs> you, do, you, do, you, do, you do have to settle those debts because uh, yeah. pe people, people are suffering and people have died. Uh, yeah. So if you don't feel what they are going through, let somebody tell you what they are going through and you ex your experience so you can do something about it. See, there's something about the power. Cost, when you have power, power you know, mm. I don't know if it blocks your brains or what, what yeah. goes on. You, 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 you're just not sensitive enough to people's to, to, feelings okay. anymore. So I'm not surprised it's taking the this pressure. The problems you've caused will solve them, don't worry. Well, we'll call some of them, okay? Yesterday, yesterday <laughs> the, NDC, the NDC said that yeah. you are paying contractors $300 million uh, mm -hmm. and that that money is as a result of the ESLA, which they initiated, which has given you money. Yeah. We'll, we'll, talk about that. We'll, we'll talk about that shortly. Okay, Crystal, welcome. <laughs> so let, let's, let's keep that one in the fridge. We'll talk about that after the messages. Well, Crystal, know, welcome. Thank you very much. What are we, what um, are we reading? So uh, from Yamoha Inwa, it says that immediately the finance minister was fingered with documentary evidence seeking to acquire Capital Bank. It was obvious that Atu ASEAN will definitely be published more for those revelations. Customers are not even getting their deposits, even with that colossal uh, amount government promised to have been released. Good morning, TV3. Good morning, Ghana. The MPP communicator should not lie again to Ghanaians that the DKM customers have been paid. Some may have received some amount of payment, but as I watched now, most customers have not received anything. He should not continue to add up to the lie said by the Nana Adudankwa and the MPP. Yeah, Kovi from true. Dabala. Hmm. Mr. Tell, Mr. Johnny, that is. Yeah. Tell Kamau, um, God is love. God is love is not paid. This is from Yakubu Ibrahim from Bolga. Johnny, the woman is too gentle for politics. Really? She al she's always smiling. Anyway, she is making a lot of sense from Dollar. So he just ended. She's making a lot of sense. So, ah. <laughs> good morning, Johnny from, um, John from Abo. It's sympathetic to hear Kamal's um, talk and uh, applauding his lazy government. In fact, we are all aware how they are employing unqualified people into public sector, some that cannot even write their name, but said they campaign for the party, hence the job. I have ev evidence of one in a ball hospital. Hello and good morning to you all. I'm happy to hear that the economy is doing well, but in my opinion, more focus should be placed in our Ghanaian uh, leaders. Our leaders today only work for their stomachs. How do you expect someone to work for seven good months without any pay? Please help me tell the press that uh, nurses, the presidents, that the nurses on rotation uh, during their service have worked for seven months now without even a peso. Wow. Are they not leaders responsible for this? Um, we are tired of these ungrateful leaders. That's from Fuseini in Tamale. Good morning, TV3. Akufuado is now, um, is now realizing that governance is not about talking uh, and big promises. It's also about action and discipline. Tactically, Ghana is not working. Things are not well in this country. The hardship is too much. Taxes are everywhere with no development. From Osman um, Bukuru Sung in <laughs> Tamale. Pardon me if I got it wrong. Is it not the same IMF that praised the previous government, but after existing... Uh, but after existing power, they were condemned. Our packet is the issue uh, here, but not the improved Mirage economic. Um, okay, that's from Sir John from Sogakove. Good morning, Johnny. Please tell um, Kamal Dean. It's Jamal, right? Kamal Dean. Kamal, Kamal, Kamal okay, Dean, pardon me. It. Kamal Dean and his uh, government and his government should be truthful to Ghanaians from Akilu. Saula in the Savannah region. Evans Kwashi Asibe from Eche, um, Afra, Afran Plains South says, this attitude um, and ultimately 
Let me check. This attitude and ultimately... Oops, I missed that. Okay. Well, while we get that sorted... Okay. Okay, okay, but you know... Well, I see a bit of a technical uh, challenge there, but uh, well, let's try and fix okay, it. Okay, it's I right mean, here. If you have technology. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, but here we go. Ah, perfect, here we go. Perfect, sure, perfect. Sure, Thank sure. you so much. Mm. So I'm um, still taking the um, comment from Evans. This attitude and ultimately... Oh, and untimely closing of banks without really considering the customer is something else that needs to be revisited. My YEA monthly payments are locked in there due to the government's hasty decision. Ghana is not going right. Good morning, TV3. No matter how good the economy, the, the economy, economy is, mm -hmm. <laughs> the over 120 ministers' salaries and incentives will derail every effort that John Dramani Mahama led government invested, especially the investment made on the oil fields. This is from Philip Yin in Tongo. From DJ O'Malley and Wayosi in Wayosi Guase, uh, anytime we hear the president, especially on Free SHS, we become proud as a Ghanaian, as, a, as Ghanaians, and confident that Ghana is uh, in the right direction. And for ex-president Mahama and his and his incompetent NDC should give us a break. Regards to Honorable Martin J. Mensah Kosa, Deputy Minister for Regional Reorganization and Development. And lastly for this morning, good morning TV3. The NPP government is a government using slow poison tactics to um, pollute the business sectors in this country by hiding behind the clock for cle of cleaning the system and boosting their own. Uh, Kamau, defending the defenseless makes one lose his credibility. Be careful what you're defending, the good people, um, what you're defending, the good people of this country are watching. Nasir from Aplau says, well, that ends the comments for okay, this morning. Thank you very much indeed. Kamau, are you defending <laughs> the defenseless? Well, that, that is the opinion of the texter. Mm. And I think that, uh, of course, you see, we are all people who want to look at um, things mm. politically. I believe um, some of these texters are also political animals, as it were. Okay. And um, they, they have their positions in their views. Um, I'm not too sure I'm defending the defenseless because they, I mean, what is not supposed to be defended. But the point is that these are facts. And I started by saying that facts are what we use to defeat propaganda. One fact is that the, the, the NDC says, and this is their fact, yeah. that they put together the ESLA and the Tepe to mm. uh, solve the problems of the banking sector and they insist mm -hmm. that they could have gotten money to sustain in fact the money that was used to collapse them could have been used to mm -hmm. solidify their efforts and would have a lot more indigenous banks oh, they said it was used for it was purposely for banking sector no or it was said, meant for energy as it were solutions. well but but energy now sector, we're using money mm -hmm. from there to do all manner of things <laughs> and, that's, that, and that's their, and that's their see, argument the argument see, is that look see, we had it for the energy sector yeah but now you're using part of it to pay contractors mm -hmm. you're using part of it to solve banking issues you are using it for everything else so don't bastardize the esla mm -hmm. like you did back in opposition yeah. you actually are benefiting from their efforts and you should give them credit you yeah, see somewhere in before 2016 running from 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016. This government, I mean, the government of NDC mm. gave contracts. Today, because we think of Ghana, we do not say that, look, this contractor was given this job yesterday mm. or today or is going to be given in future. What matters is that the state owes. What are the mod modalities put in place to ensure mm -hmm. the citizens of this country who are legitimately owed by the state are paid? Here we are talking about the contractors, road contractors. And government of the day, it has never happened. And mm -hmm. I wanted to go and check it. Put aside, since we came into government, mm -hmm. close to 3.2 billion Ghana cities to pay contractors in this country. And we have done and we are on course of doing that. And they were asked Irrespective to, they, they of when were your contract given. They were asked to discount their, their figures that at the Fidelity Bank. They came to us here. Yes. The contractors were furious. You see, you see that what? That you were asking them to take off some between 10 and 15% of what, you, what was owed them by the state. It's a matter for you to look into later. No, no. They brought, they brought the letter that I, was I, given I, to I, them. I, I, I have officials given of the finance contracts ministry. were given prior to the 2016 election. Look. Left, right, center. The final, the road minister was just throwing out contracts. To who? Today we are sitting down. Ghanaians are complaining. The roads have not been constructed. Right. Job has not been done. 
go out there and do a, and your own investigation as a media house you will see that every area has a, to complain and okay. yet contractors say we have not paid them their monies okay. what due diligence what monitoring did the then government do okay that okay. government owes that much today we are saying that look this government of akufado has paid contractors more than any government ever okay. and of course it's a record there for us to prove you are talking about this energy discount some 10 percent or whatever let's look into that, that that's, a, that's a fact. what is it's material what is material is that we have thought of Ghanaians, okay. we have thought of contractors, mm -hmm. we are paying them, work is being done. It tells you that the economy, as we say, is resilient, it's still solid. Okay. And we are getting let's, money. Let's to allow pay. the lady it's to have a, a bite of this. Uh, so, the, the Esla. Is it's actually about Esla, because the Esla, Esla, Esla was created hmm. um, at a time when the hmm. banks were having liquidation issues because right. of the energy sector debt. Right. Now, at the time, the purpose of Esla. Because of foreign, uh, foreign uh, exchange losses, sorry, mm. and the um, debt accrued from foreign exchange losses. So now, fast forward. Mm. The purpose for us, that was the purpose for Esla. Currently, you are using it to pay contractors. Okay. It's sure. taking you three years mm. to pay contractors. It's not true. Please. Mm, you know. And then, and then they expect us to jump and be excited that it's taking three years and the contracts are finally getting paid. At long last. When people have died. As long last. As long been last. Paid, so after three years. Mm. Oh. In that three years, mm. they said they were going to have an audit of all government projects. Right. They spent so much money on these audits. What did they find? Half of it was next to nothing. In the Ministry of Finance, there's a monitoring system there. Right. That is used to monitor contracts. Contract is a stage of the contract <laughs> and in the payments. Mm. If that system was being utilized properly, should we have this situation? Mm -hmm. No, because the Minister of Finance should be able to tell us at what level the scope of jobs has been completed. Okay. And not waste three years is when it? you've let Thank you. Okay. Well, 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 come on, our time, time is up. Come on, our time is up. For the first time, for the first time, time government has made it attractive for you to go for GOG contracts. Okay. Eighty percent of these contractors are bank of Ghana, Ghana government contractors. Mm. GOG contracts. We're going to pay. It has never happened under the. The collapse bank say if you, paid, Ghan, if you had paid, if you had paid the contractors, they would have, they would have. This argument, I told you. Don't mm. you even bring out their list. Okay. It tells you when you pay them, even they can still pay them. Okay. okay. <laughs> they will not still be solvent. I'm I hear you. Check it. I hear you. The figures are there. They will not still be solvent. Thank you very much. Kamal Din Abdullahi is uh, Deputy National Communications Director of the NDC. Uh, MPP, I beg your pardon. And uh, Gabriela uh, Tete is also a member of the NDC's communication team. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Gabriela, is it you, you like smiling. You are, you are too soft for politics. Yeah, but politics is not a do and die matter. Not everybody has to come here like him and like at the end of the world. Anyway.